everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. Today we're going to be talking about one of my most hated pests and that is spider mites. Spider mites are tiny little spider-like insects that live in and around the leaves of your plants. I honestly used to think that fungus gnats were really the biggest problem that I had when it came to pests and about a year, a year and a half into my plant journey I got spider mites for the first time and let me tell you they have been an absolute nightmare and if you're not quite sure how to tackle them they can quickly overcome your plants especially if you've got quite a few like I do. So I'm here today to tell you about the tips and tricks that I have to help manage any spider mite outbreaks you've got and also how to identify them just to make sure that you are taking swift action. Spider mites prefer hot and dry conditions. So being in Australia, it's often hot and dry, especially at this time of the year. It's currently our summer, so we are really seeing an increase in the heat. And if you saw my last couple of videos, you'll know that I've been talking nonstop about this nightmare heat wave that has absolutely destroyed so many of my plants. Um, I have actually noticed that spider mites have occurred on two of my plants here. So I'm going to give you some of the examples that I've got here. The first sign of spider mites I generally see is almost always on the back of the leaves. They can appear almost like a fine dust uh, and when you do look closer you can actually sometimes see the bugs themselves and also the webbing that they create. As that life cycle moves along and they take over the plant you will start to see things like leaf damage which to me appears like an almost pitted appearance of the leaf. Uh, they also will yellow off and die and when they get really heavily infested you will see a lot of those webs. They will become super obvious to you. So the examples I have here are firstly this colocasia. Um, I'm going to give you a few close-up shots of what these look like on the leaves. This leaf in particular we have had a lot of trouble with. You can see quite obviously there the spider mites appearing in the middle of the leaf and also some slight webbing. And this leaf, let's just show you, that's the situation we're in right now. We are in complete flop city, so we really need to get on top of this as soon as possible to prevent this plant from dying and also to prevent it infecting other plants. Another thing to be aware of is, especially if you do have them outside, or you do run the air conditioning or any kind of airflow, spider mites will actually glide along the wind to your next plant. So again, it is something that you really need to keep an eye out for. I've also identified a spider mite infestation by just my general leaf cleaning. And in leaf cleaning, you will find that you will pick up things a lot quicker than if you don't. Uh, what I find is that when I wipe off a leaf, when they die or when I wipe them off, they tend to come off in like this kind of yellowy, and I'll show you in a minute a real life example of this, but you will actually see their bodies kind of smoosh and give you like this yellowy color on whatever you're using to wipe it down. So it is important to look on your cloth or whatever apparatus you're using to clean your leaves. I usually like to do it between every couple of leaves just to make sure I'm picking up anything that may be going wrong. The other plant that I have here that has had an outbreak is this beautiful Tatanthi that I absolutely adore, but I have noticed that it's just getting worse and worse and I really need to get on top of it before it spreads to my other plants. So I'm going to bring these guys just a little bit closer so you can see what I'm dealing with. This leaf is a really good example of what you're looking for when it comes to spider mites. He is quite a bit far gone, so you can actually see the webbing in here that has occurred. And you can also see the damage in the leaf as well. Let me just change the light there a little bit just so it's as obvious as possible. So you can really clearly see that webbing in there. It could easily mis be mistaken for dust, but I know a thousand percent that this is spider mites. And it is also starting to spread to the other leaves on this plant. So you can see in here, we do have a few. To use this beautiful Tatanthi as an example, I'm just going to pull this leaf back here and you will actually see, particularly along the spine of the leaf, the presence of those spider mites. So I can actually see some crawling right now. How gross, we really need to get on top of this. The longer you look, the more you can actually see them moving around. And honestly, guys, it is so yuck and nasty. If you do realize that you do have spider mites on your plants, never fear, there are a few things that you can do to help get rid of them. Now, the product that I like to use the most is neem oil. If you've been in the house plant business community for a while, you've probably heard of it before and it is a product that I love. Neem oil is made from the neem tree and is one of the more natural insecticides that you can use. The concern I have about using chemical or insecticide type solutions is that they 
are really indiscriminate. So there are a lot of beneficial bugs out there that I know I'm killing when using these products. So I like to use them as sparingly as possible. Although I'm not gonna be covering it too much in this video, there are also some really beneficial insects that you can purchase that will actually kill the spider mites. So by introducing in the natural predator, which they may not have at the moment, they can just take care of the problem for you. But I wanted to give you a really, really easy solution first up. I actually have some mixed in here. Uh, as you can see, it says neem oil, um, and I've got it mixed in with a bit of uh, dish, dishwashing liquid as well. Um, so it is a little bit foamy in there, especially the more I shake it. But this is gonna be a lifesaver. I'm also gonna grab some paper towel, which I'm sure we all have paper towel at home. If not, I'm sure you've got some kind of cloth uh, that you'll be able to use. But I like paper towel because I'm going to throw this away immediately after using it, purely because I don't wanna leave it lying around so that it can be used again, or whatever spider might survive this may then potentially go onto other plants. So first things first, I'm just going to tear off a little bit of our paper towel here and I like to kind of fold it up into a square it's really up to you on how you want to do this there really isn't a right or wrong way and I'm just going to give this paper towel a really really good spray that was probably a little much it's tripped on the floor but you can see now this paper towel is quite moist now I'm gonna take this paper towel over each of these leaves. So where we can see, particularly here, I do have quite a lot of spider mites. I'm just going to give it a really, really good rub and just clean off that entire leaf. Now also remember to clean off the backs really thoroughly as well. Don't be afraid to take a look to make sure you're getting the whole leaf. And this is also really good to do to just get dust off your leaf as well. And I like to kind of run it down the petiole just to make sure I'm catching anything that's back there as well. And I will repeat this process for each of my leaves. Now I have cleaned off each and every one of these leaves and as I mentioned earlier, you can see some of that orangey kind of discoloration on this paper towel. That is telling me that it's picking up these spider mites. With this last leaf here, he is pretty much ready to just die. So I'm gonna trim him off and you may choose to do this with any of your leaves that you feel are just too far gone. And I think this is gonna be a really good example of how I can bring it up really, really close, just so you can get a really good idea of what that looks like. So I'm going to use the other side of this paper towel, the clean side, and I'm just gonna give this a good little scrub. Um, I can tell that this one was quite heavily infected. And again, when I run this over the backs of the leaves, they are hiding back there as well. So when we wipe it off, now it is free of spider mites. You can still see that damage is quite visible and that damage won't go away on any leaf that has got it. That is there until the leaf drops. So spider mite damage can be really visible even though the outbreak may not be continual. So this is the cloth after I have done all that cleaning. You can see that big yellowy brown splodge, which is basically a massacre of spider mite bodies. And that tells me I've done a really good job. So I think this colocasia is now good to go back into quarantine. Uh, something I didn't touch on before is that quarantine is really beneficial for the plants that are impacted. Once I finish the process with this plant, I will generally do it once a week or every couple of days for roughly about a month or until I no longer see signs of infection. And I like to treat it a little bit like antibiotics. I don't know whether this happens to you, but when I go to the doctor and I take antibiotics, he's like, don't stop taking them when you feel better, take them until the course is finished. And that's the same kind of principle that I like to apply to treating my plants with spider mites. Uh, I like to go those extra few times, even though I may not see the presence anymore, because they are quite small, they are quite easy to miss, and they may not even be visible to you. Another way you can get rid of your spider mites is by submerging the foliage of the plant into a similar solution to what we've got here. Now, basically the way that I would do that is to get a plastic bucket, fill it up with my solution, I'd probably use two pieces of wood um, and balance the plant basically on its side, not obviously directly upside down, but on the side so that it is getting wet. You will also want to take precautions to make sure that the soil doesn't all fall out of the pot when you do uh, tip it over. So the way I like to do that is by packing the base of the plant with paper towel, 
taping it in so when I do turn it on its side, which I'm not going to do too much here, um, it uh, won't lose all the soil in the water. I want to gently submerge my plant in the water. I want to make sure I get all of the foliage and without being too aggressive or harsh, I gently wash off my plant leaves. You may also choose to give them a bit of a wipe over after this step just as an extra precaution. I hope you've all learned something today in how to tackle spider mites. If you have another way that you use to get rid of them, please leave a comment down below. I love to always get new tips and tricks on how to tackle these outbreaks. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up down below, hit subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Stay safe, guys.